And we are live. Hey everyone, Matt Lanfair here with Primary and Secondary. This is Modcast. This is Modcast number 87. We haven't done one of these since, wow, it's been since last year. Yeah, I have a really cool panel. We're going to talk about some cool stuff. Uh, primarily, we're going to be talking about plateaus in learning, plateaus in training, and uh, basically hitting, hitting walls in, in your personal training. And try to try to overcoming or try to overcome that. It's interesting hearing from uh, people talking about primary and secondary, specifically the Facebook groups and the forum, and how they feel. You know, it's changed. It's not as good as it used to be. We're gonna get into that because there's some cool stuff going on. Um, I guess we can start with some intros. Um, my background's in law enforcement, some video games, a lot of video editing. Um, eh, that's pretty much it. Steve, Steve Fisher. How are you, sir? Good. I'm gonna I'm gonna crank up your audio just a little bit. Why don't you right. Why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, um, Steve Fisher. I've been uh, started my career shooting a million years ago, like most everybody else. Went to the law enforcement community, became a full time instructor, and it's just been downhill ever since. Yeah, and it's cool because you've been around for a while. You also were a, a, a close friend of Pat's. Yeah. He was very influential and it's, yeah, he, he's, uh, his influence is, is also going to be part of our discussion here. Uh, Rick. Hey guys, uh, Rick Levistri. Um, currently, uh, sniper section leader, light infantry battalion, um, been in the army, uh, national guard here for about almost 15 years now. Um, couple deployments, Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, 11 Bravo by trade, uh, coming over here as primary secondary, just to give as much as I can and see if I can learn something myself too. More, What's hanging out? <laughs> hanging out, you know, hanging out. um, Justin, uh, Justin Smith. I am a supervisor, narcotic supervisor in my primary job, uh, 15 years law enforcement. Uh, I'm a, also a team leader for a 30 man part-time team in the Southeast major metropolitan area. And I'm an instructor. And you are an instructor. Yeah, that too. And finally, Mike. Yeah, Mike, he's um, worked with Pat for a very long time, uh, consult with some people and, generally study and advise on uh, human performance and how people uh, learn things, uh, cognitive learning skills. So hopefully I can contribute a little bit. And with that in mind, when I sent out the link for, for guys to jump on and you jumped on, it was like, oh, this is the perfect guy. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you were, you were available because the, the many conversations we've had, you're, you're a perfect panelist for this and you have good taste in food. So. There's that. So basically the, the main theme is, is plateaus in learning plateaus in, in, in training in law enforcement. Um, well, law enforcement, there's, a, there are a lot of plateaus there. There's only so much you can do on your, or go, go through the department and then you have to do things on your own. But um, really talking about the processes, the learning and the absorption when it comes to uh, going to classes, it seems a lot of people go to, the exact same instructor time after time after time go through the same class time after time after time and expect to get these these brand new epiphanies these new these new concepts these these explosions of learning it's not necessarily going to be the case um you, you you ultimately may run into some diminishing returns steve what are your thoughts on that you know it's an interesting thought um like many of us who started our training history, um, you know, we were very limited in the nineties uh, by who we could go and train with or what was available to us, you know, and it wasn't necessarily bad. Um, you know, hitting that wall is kind of interesting. Most students that I've seen over the years that I kind of understand, you know, and Mike's the same way. Um, they end up in this, this virgin love we'll call it, you know, they, they get in with their first instructor or they feel comfortable with an instructor and they want to stay with that instructor and keep repeating the same programs over and over and over again. 
um, actually I've had to tell students before and still do every class. It's literally, dude, you need to open up your horizons. You need to open up your windows, even though as an instructor, I'm continually learning, right? continually trying to educate myself. Like my, my latest quest has been like vision processing to help with those things. Um, working with some guys that I shoot with here locally that are future, you know, like I care research study dudes. It's really been kind of a eye opener for me, literally, but, um, Dudes need to get out more and expand those horizons. They'll only reach a certain level with the same instructor. You know, a lot of quote unquote instructors versus teachers have that same program, that same database, that same bullet point. It's very institutionalized inbred of training. That's just, they're comfortable with the program they're teaching. They're not really evolving their programs to today's current threat assessments that are going on and what the needs are of the students, either be it, you know, the average citizen, law enforcement, whatever the case is, but too many dudes just get stuck or comfortable wanting to touch the magic, so to speak. You know, and they're hurting themselves. They're not seeking out new information and vital or critical information. I really appreciate the fact that you 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 associated this with love because I see that. I definitely see that. You get this first taste and wow, this is the best thing ever. And it's I wouldn't say it's like a drug. But I'd say, yeah, getting that first overwhelming epiphany, this, this, this the, the change in your, par- a, a huge paradigm shift and to figure out, oh, this is how things really work. And then it takes so much more information to get that. And you probably will never get that again, but it's, it's continual. It, it is. It really does evolve. And, you know, it's interesting for me to see how, the training industry community has changed over the years. But, you know, the funny thing is I can go to almost any class that I go and take and I will run into somebody that I know or have taught or taken classes with. And it's the same people in the same very small circle. Yeah. And it, it's a very interesting kind of like factoid. Like to me, like I first met Mike back in like, God, 2000, early 2000s of Pat. I, I People have missed out a lot over the years with, uh, Mike, honestly, he is one of the most like eye-opening dudes that I have ever learned from and actually had the ability to actually be on the line with as an instructor for some classes. Um, I learned an amazing, amazing amount of knowledge from that man. It's just unbelievable. Um, and it, it's funny because I've gone to you know all the big names, all the big places. But man, the shit I learned from even Mike just in like the early to mid two thousands was just mind blowing to me. And it was the simplest little things that I had often overlooked, which really also helped me as an instructor to kind of replay that tape and present information differently to some students. It's, it's the little nuggets that people miss by staying in the same place all the time. Mike. Thanks, Steve. I'll give you your five bucks uh, next time I see you. Um, <laughs> so first thing as a student you need to identify is what are your goals, right? Why are you going to class? Some people just want to acquire some basic funda- some fundamental skills with the tool that they have in their hand, and they really don't want to go beyond that. And you see a lot of students that show up year after year at the same range at the same time of year with the same instructor because it's like going on a fishing trip with their buds or golfing or whatever. It's a way to get away from the stresses of life, and that's all they want out of it. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I'm, I'm glad they're out there. All the other instructors are glad they're out there because it's a, it's a constant uh, stream of um, income for them because these are students that they're familiar with. They know where those students are in their skill sets. And they know what kind of problem children they're going to be or not, or they're not going to be. So you have that kind of a student and their goals are different than somebody like Justin or Steve or you or me, or some of the other people that we deal with who are constantly trying to evolve their um, understanding of fundamentals and the layering of different fundamentals. I, I, I stress this every time I deal with people, there's no such thing as an advanced skill. There's an accomplished fundamental. So the, the professional student, the person seeking to raise their level, has a different goal in mind. And as instructors, 
you have to understand the difference between those two groups of people, those that do it kind of as recreation or just as <clears throat> acquiring enough to do what they need, they think they need to do. And those that are, are, are serious about their profession um, who are trying to really raise their level to a pretty uh, accomplished um, uh, mindset and uh, skill qualification. Um, so goal is the first thing. So what is your goal as a student? What do I want to do? And the second thing that they have to consider is the process. And the process is tied to the goal in some ways, but it's also separate from the goal in other ways. And so <clears throat> let me give you an example. You want to um, make a perfect apple pie. Let's just make, let's make this outside of shooting so we can understand the cognitive concepts. You want to make a perfect apple pie and you look at a recipe from a famous um, chef and you follow that recipe and you make the first time, the first iteration you make an apple pie. Um, it, it's okay because you followed the recipe, but it's not exceptional. The more times you do that, the more times you make that apple pie, the more times you do good repetitions, you're driving the process towards the goal. So the goal is always important. It's the standard that you're reaching, but it's the process that allows you to reach for the goal. And we've always, you know, a lot of us or most of us have stressed in class, you know, it's not, uh, uh, it, it, let me rephrase it a different way. I'll sit in a classroom and I'll ask people, what does practice make? And what do most people say? Perfect. Correct. Don't we all agree with that? You ask people, yep. what does practice make? They're no. fucking perfect, right? That's wrong. Practice makes permanent. Okay. Perfect practice makes perfect. We know that perfection is not achievable. But working on the process toward perfection is something that anybody can do. So if I have somebody that is focusing on the process rather than the goal, and they focus on good repetitions, they will go down that pathway towards the goal faster. Their learning curve shallows out much more quickly than somebody that just focuses on the end state. The end state the, is, is the metric but it's the process between where you start and where you want to reach the end state is what makes you a better shooter or a better person that makes a pie. So you have to have a goal as a student. What kind of student do you want to be? What are you trying to acquire? And then you have to understand the concepts of process. Unfortunately, most instructors, not most instructors, a lot of instructors and most students, most students specifically do not understand that the process is everything. And you get, you, you were mentioning earlier, Steve and, and Matt, um, you have people that go to the same instructor all the time and they don't get, get outside their comfort zone. Um, they're people that don't empty their teacup, right? If I go to Steve Fisher all the time, or I go to, you know, if I go to Mike Pannone or I go to Pat McNamara or any of the other well-known instructors, and that's, those are the only people I study under, I'm going to miss other things because my teacup is full of their training doctrine and their ideology and philosophy. And you miss things like, like Fisher was saying earlier, there are subtleties that you can't pick up on if you go to the same person, because you know what the POI is going to be, you know, on training day two, right before lunch, this is the drill you're going to do. And you kind of tune out because you're not getting a stressor. The stressors are what make you think and grow. So if people don't empty their teacup, or you could look at it another way, all they drink is tea and they never pour their teacup out and drink coffee. Right. So Fisher is tea and I'm coffee. You go to Fisher all the time. All you know is tea. There's an advantage to drinking coffee. Also, there's a, there's a delight in drinking coffee. So you want to come to me for something or you want to go to Shockey or Pat or Pat McNamara or Mike Pannone or any of these other people. Um, so it's it's goal first and process second. And if you understand how the process works, which we'll get into later, that has to do with cognitive development. Um, then you can flatten your learning curve out pretty considerably and kind of compress your skill acquisition. So I hope that kind of clarifies some points or illustrates some points. Uh, if not, you know, speak up. Yeah, that's good stuff. As per the norm, 